Hey, hi everyone, it's Phil from statisticsmentor.com. Talking about here is supply and demand equations. The starting point is with the demand and supply sets. So, how we read this is here that this is D for demand set is equal to the set of all pairs of Q quantity and P for price such that this expression is satisfied. Likewise for S for supply is the set of all pairs of quantity and price such that this expression is satisfied. What we want to do is to be able to sketch the set if our graph looks like this, where Q is along the horizontal axis and P is on the vertical axis, then oh no, why did I say that? Now, since Q is on the horizontal axis and P is on the vertical axis, that explains why we've written them this way around: Q comma P instead of P comma Q. So we're looking first at notation here: Q comma P because by convention it is the the thing that comes first in this case Q is the thing that is along the horizontal or some people say the x-axis and the thing that comes after it comes on the vertical axis this being P right so each number the first number followed by the second number that tells us how lo much long we go along the horizontal axis and then up Y is the value on the vertical axis. Okay, so this is not equal to y, comma x, different points. In other words, for example, three six is not the same as the point six three. Let's see where this could be. Three six three along here. Six up. Say six would be the point here. 3, 6 this would be. Where 6, 3 would be along here. 6, go up 3, maybe there. Okay, you can see two different points. So first that, so that I've explained the, um, the bracket here and the order matters. Now in order to sketch the set we need to obtain, we need to know about functions. So recall that function, well function we feed the inputs, say the variables, it's variables, into a black box which is the function and the function gives us out one or more values. And when we're dealing with equilibrium we need to consider four functions. Well, I say we need to, we don't need to, but there are four functions to consider. Right, first of all is something called demand function. Demand function is a function such that if you tell me what the price of the good is, feed that into the function, f for function, tell you what the quantity demanded will be supply function. Similarly, the supply function, tell me what the price of the good is at supply. The supply function tell you the quantity that will be supplied. Now, notation. Because you see here that I've got FP, FP, but these two functions are doing different things. This is te function is telling me about demand. This function is telling me about supply. So we need to use different notation for these f's. All right, and here is one such notation we can use for the demand function. We can say, Q, depending on which textbook you use, Q D for quantity demanded. All right, so it's here Q D is in place of f. 
QD means quantity demanded is not Q raised to the power of D. This D is not a number. And down here we could say Q denote by the supply function by QS as a function of P comes in the brackets. Alright, so when we say QDP that is a demand function and this is a supply function. Now these are the two basic functions that would introduced to first time in economics. However, there's another pair of functions which convey the same information and they're called the respectively the inverse demand function and the inverse supply function. Now the inverse demand function contains the same information as the demand function but looks at the relationship with the input as the quantity rather than the price. Feed it in, and it will tell you what the price of it will be. You tell me what the quantity demanded is, it will tell you what the corresponding price is. Inverse supply. So it's like that's what the word inverse means, doesn't it? Means like the reverse or something opposite. So similarly, for the inverse supply, you feed it into a function, the inverse supply function. Tell me what the quantity supplied is, I'll tell you what the price of that supply is supplied at. Again, since these F's here they denote different things, we need notation for them. So in this case, we can do this. PS, so quantity is the input, price is the output, so this is inverse um, oops, inverse demand, D for demand. And down here we want PS for inverse supply. So the f to summarize the key four key equations to do with equilibrium at demand supply is the demand function, um, the supply function, the inverse demand function, oops, cracky, and the inverse supply function. Now, I say equal, 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 equal. On the right hand side of this form of this equation will be numbers and p, because p is the input. All right, so that's what it should look like. Now, it's not enough just to write down the equation for each of these guys here, whatever they are, because we're doing economics here, there are various constraints on quantity and price. So along with these equations, we must complete the uh, equation, write down the corresponding constraints, if any, on the price and quantity. Now the trivial one which must be satisfied, trivial constraints must be satisfied all of them, is that the price is non-negative and the quantity is non-negative. Okay, Because the solutions here have to make economic sense and here is a trivial so this must be satisfied for all lot of whole lot of them. But on top of this, there could be some other conditions. In other words, it might be that p is bigger than or equal to zero, but less than or equal to some figure. All right. Likewise with q, it's definitely always got to be bigger or equal to zero, but it might be that it's got to be less than or equal to some figure. And these two numbers you have to work out for our problem, for a given problem. That's one thing. Second thing. So why do we have four equations? What's the point, you know? Um, because since the demand and inverse demand is obtained from the demand set and the supply function and the inverse supply function is obtained from the supply set, it must mean that irrespective of which equation we use, for example, demand or inverse demand, we get the same coordinates, Q and P. All right. Well, this comes now to the point about sketching the graph. Recall that from school stats, uh, school math, sorry. Forget this is maths. You might have seen this kind of equation, mx plus c. Or it might be outdated now. At least this was the kind of notation I saw when I was at school. So anything like this is a form of a straight line where y is the vertical axis, x is the horizontal axis, m is the gradient, c is the intercept. I right, the graph cuts the vertical axis. 
So if we want to draw this, what we can see is that my x is my q, my y is my p. So in other words, if I want to draw the demand set, I have to be, get it of the form p equals blah 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 on the right hand side. In other words, am I drawing here, Am I do I need the demand function or do I need the inverse demand function to sketch the line for the demand set? The answer is I need the inverse demand function because I've got q as the input and p as the output. All right. Likewise with supply, it's not the supply equation I need, it's the inverse supply. However, if we were to consider the graph instead of p up here and q down here, if we consider instead q here and p here, then to sketch the sets now, demand set would use the demand equation, and to sketch the supply set we use the supply equation. All right. But since in, on our course, in our textbook, we're using it this way, this way around, we're using, we need the inverse demand and inverse supply to sketch the curves. Before we sketch the curve, let's just make a note on what shape we expect it to be. Well, first of all, since we said that the constraints, the, the uh, graphs have got to make economic, the, um, yeah, uh, the solution has to make economic meaning, price and quantity have to be non-negative. In other words, we're considering only this space here, otherwise known as the first quadrant. All right, so we ignore everything out here, but we could still sketch it anyway. Um, just to show show people that we understand how to sketch graph, but we say that only the positive quadrant is what we we want. Right, so let us do it for this case. So the demand equation.